What weight is that? This is 52 pounds. It's plenty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plenty. It's pretty painful. It's very painful. I'm literally smashing. Yeah, I'm just I'm just letting it sit there. I'm just yeah. finding a place on my on my quad or of the muscle that's really tight, and I'll just like sit there until it like relaxes. It's almost like when you're having like a deep tissue massage and someone finds like a knot and they just kind of sit on it for a little bit. It's the same idea, only it's much cheaper, and I get to use a kettlebell. Enough room for the both of us. Look, if you ever calling me, call me number one. one. Oops, I did it again, about to double up. Look, up here, definition of a level up. One. All my celebrations always been premeditated, always been a step ahead. That's why you finish seconds later. Sure. Different between us, I go back to back, you back to basics. These are facts you face, and I'm just saying you were dealing with them. Wrong one this time. Don't come. It's, uh... it's, it's bar plus plus. It's bar muscle ups and, and uh, deadlifts. You know, a lot of people don't think about if uh, when I get fatigued on bar muscle ups, I, get, I like to jump into it. I don't do bar muscle ups very often, so I think I'm gonna do them today. Like, take for example this bar. This is like perfect. So, when you're doing like, a kipping pull up or a bar muscle up, this is a good height because you want it to be high enough where your feet don't drag but not so high you have to jump super far. And so this is a good height for me in my opinion. But what I like to do when I get tired, in particular, with either chest bars or bar muscle ups, is I like to jump into it. So instead of being underneath and going for my first bar muscle up, I'll be a little bit back, and then I'll jump into the position, almost like a glide kit, if people know what that is. So it's here, right? And that positions you here. Let's just say I was tired. I would just do that. I would do one, do one, do one, and then if I was feeling good, obviously I'd do more, but when you're tired and fatigued, I like to think about jumping in towards the bar. It helps me out. One bar muscle up. Two. This is a... What playlist would you call this? I like it, by the way, for the record. That, that wasn't a, a loaded question. I was, uh, I truly enjoy some good country. This is, this is Kip Moore Essentials. Hey, it's 1, 2, 12, right? 2, 4, yeah.
That was like a slow a beat up. Like, start off not that bad, but when you start hitting those high reps on bar muscles, it's tough. You have to break it up accordingly. The grip was a lot today. If you try and go for one more and you miss it, because you don't have enough kip power, it just fatigues you and is demoralizing. So I try and think about, okay, how much do I have in the tank? Do I need to come down, reset, and then get in a new rep? I think having a sound kip is always gonna benefit you because you'll fatigue out slower. And then obviously, if you have that prerequisite strict strength, that's the key. So strict pull-up strength, all the way to strict chest to bar, I think is key for a bar muscle up. And then learning how to time the kip accordingly to get the most out of your lat and the most out of your hip to get up and over that bar, especially when you're tired, is critical. So we just got done with bar muscle ups, which you know is mainly upper body, and deadlift, which is mainly like posterior chain, and then kettlebell swing, which is again like posterior chain, a lot of grip. So the couch stretch isn't necessarily specific for those movements. If I wanted to do something specific for those, maybe I'd be doing like a, a you know, um, reverse hyper, maybe I'd be stretching out my hamstrings, maybe I'd be doing something for my shoulders. But for me, I find the couch stretch just hits a lot of areas that I'm super tight. And so every day, I'm trying to start incorporating it. Like, I really suck at this. And so when it comes to mobility, I feel like people always try and like commit to too much. So right now, the only thing I'm committing to is I'm trying to do the couch stretch every day for about 30 seconds each side for about three to four rounds. That's it. And anytime I try and commit, to more, right, I never end up accomplishing the task. And so right now, I find the couch stretch gives me a great quad stretch, a great hip stretch, and I suck at it so much. I think it's really gonna help like knee pain, back issues, I think it's gonna be, I know it's gonna pay off. People come in this gym all the time. I wanna lose 100 pounds. I'm gonna come in every day, I'm gonna eat perfect. And they stay for like a month and then they're gone. And I think the key is consistency and the key is like knowing where you're at. Like with me, with mobility, like I've known the benefits for 20 years, but I've never really been consistent with it. Yeah, I'll do it, but I normally only do it once I have some type of pain. And so what I'm trying to get ahead of is before I have any type of pain, how do I start incorporating this type of stuff to alleviate ever even getting it? Um, and you gotta start slow, you know, because we don't wanna burn out. Dude, you gotta put money in the piggy bank. You know, for me, uh, I look at fitness kinda like I look at like a uh, savings account and a retirement fund. And it's all about this compounding interest. And so what happens is you start off on day one, you know, you're whatever, then day two, then day three, then day four. By the time you look at it, if you stay consistent three, four days a week, you don't have to do a lot. You just have to do it consistently multiple times a week. And all of a sudden you look at it a year, two years, five years later, and you've built up a large mass of, of um, fitness. It's the same thing with money. Imagine if you were to go and you put, I don't know, $100,000 into a savings account. Like, that's awesome, right? Or maybe not 100, let's just say 10,000. You put $10,000 into a savings account. But instead, what if you put $200 or $100 two times a week, and you did that for a year, two years, three years, five years, next thing you know, many years down the line, you've compounded all this money. Um, that's the key. So it's not about coming in here and hitting it super hard for one day. It's about coming in and hitting it well for many days. Booyah. There's not enough room for the both of us. Look, if you ever calling me, call me number one. one. Oops, I did it again.